This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. So lately I've been working on transforming this little shed into a beautiful handful workshop and the first thing I want to build for the shop is a nice robot style workbench. Something a touch undersized because it's a small space and I'm going to be using some oak for this build. Now one of the most important features of a bench in my opinion is the vise, some place where you can hold stock or whatever it is that you're working on securely. Now there are obviously a lot of different options when it comes to vices. But for this bench, and really for the whole shop in general, I really want to go authentic and try out different things. So I thought, what a perfect opportunity to make a leg vise with a wooden screw. So this video is a little experimentation in making wooden screws and figuring this out. So first of all, I picked up this inch and a half tap and die set. And inch and a half seems to be the largest option that's readily available out there and in some ways I kind of wanted to go bigger because I was wondering if that would be large enough in terms of strength but I figured might as well try it out. So the first step here is making a inch and a half diameter dowel. Now you could obviously buy a pre-made dowel and while that would be nice in some ways you could eliminate this first step um, it also limits what type of wood you can use um, as well as the design you may be after. So here's a piece of maple getting ready for the lathe. Next up, mineral oil soaking, and this is to prevent the fibers of the wood from tearing as you create the threads. And we're using this plastic container that some ceiling tracks came packaged in. Um, and it does use a lot of oil, but you can reuse the oil when you're done, so it's not so bad. And then making threads here with the thread box. And there's a little section where the chips fall out. And the tool is quite easy to use. Uh, once you get the first thread speed, it, it catches on. And then it's just a matter of continuing. And it's quite, I don't know, it's quite fun and quite satisfying uh, to cut this like this. So inevitably when you're turning a rod, it's quite hard to get a perfectly even size in terms of diameter. So one section was just a little bit too big and then the thread box won't cut. So I put the uh, dowel back on the lathe here just to trim it a touch. And uh, oh yeah, turning wood soaked in oil, it's, it's actually quite nice. It reminded me of turning, you know, really oily tropical woods, which yeah, makes sense. And then after that little adjustment, it was easy to continue making the threads. And I would say this wood is, is cutting really well. In fact, I did a test first where I didn't soak the dowel in oil. And the difference, it's quite dramatic because it tears a lot more and you don't get those really crisp threads in the same way. So next up was making a nut for the screw to screw into for this test. So drilling a one and a half inch hole with a Forstner bit. And then I used some of my mineral oil wax polish instead of soaking this in oil before using the tap to create the female threads. And this is where I realized that it was tricky to do this completely straight. Um, it very easily becomes slightly angled. Now once you get the first threads going, it finds its way quite easily. And then testing if the screw goes in. <laughs> 
and I realized that you definitely need more wax polish here or I, I guess you could soak it more in oil it's creaky <laughs> but I think it needs to be just worked a bit more The other thing is, if you use a wax polish here, make sure to use one that doesn't contain any oil that cures, like linseed or tongue oil or anything like that, because you want this uh, to stay wet, like a mineral oil. So set up a little mock-up thing here. Uh, so imagine that this right here is the leg of the bench, and then I have the, the screwed with the, with the threads on it and the hole inside here. I wanted to see how it would work. So here you would have the flange, which would be glued on, and here is like the, the chop creating the vise. Um, and I also drilled a hole right in the threaded dowel here so that you can create a handle like this. Um, so I was kind of playing with it and thinking about what I like and what I don't like. And it seems that this flange right here, gluing this on, uh, seems like a real weak point that that would break over time. <laughs> Not to mention this right here. I mean, this is an inch and a half threaded and then a hole drilled through. So that's not very strong, that wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't last very long. So I'm not loving that. But then I was thinking, okay, since I'm doing this from scratch, I'm not using like a, a dowel and, and, and creating this with, I could use any wood since I'm turning it on the lathe. Like why don't I use something like this? Okay, so this is one of the legs. This is four by four uh, red oak. And why don't I use this um, and keep the squareness right at the end? That way I will create this natural flange um, that will be the stop point that is not gonna break off at all. And I can drill through here and add like a, a nice handle. I think I like that idea. I think that would be very stable um, and very secure. So I realized that I'm reinventing the wheel here. I mean, people have done these things before. However, I have purposely not looked into how others have sold this because I want to really understand it and figure out a solution on my own. And I found that doing a project from scratch and experimenting is the best way for me to do that. So this chunky four x four, um, I created by gluing up smaller pieces. And it's obviously a lot of material to remove on the lathe, especially when you want to keep like one section large, like the end here, but bring down the remaining piece so you can't cut it on the table saw or the band saw as easily. And another thing, I was trying to remember if I have ever turned red oak before. I don't think so, but it smelled really weird. Not a great smell. <laughs> and. It tears quite easily, although that's just the nature of oak. So I primarily used the roughing gouge here, um, and I wanted to create a bit of a detail on the flange section. Once I had gotten the diameter down almost to the right size, I switched to a scraper instead, just to smooth it out, and that worked out quite nicely. And I checked the diameter over and over again, and in the end, it actually ended up being just a touch under an inch and a half, so I was a little bit worried about that, but I figured if it doesn't work, well, I'll just have to do it again. Not a big deal. This part is like here. So it's like this. Okay, so back to soaking it in oil. And this is the same oil being reused. And it definitely takes a while for the bubbles to be released. Again, oak is so porous. But yeah, I definitely recommend you soak it for a good 24 hours or, or uh, quite a while, just to be on the safe side. Then back to creating the male threads here. And oh yeah, I really enjoy using this tool. It is oddly satisfying using it. Um, I have to say that I really love the idea of a wooden screw. I mean, yes, this vise is not going to be as fast or as smooth to secure as a metal screw vise, um, but there's just something about this idea which really appeals to me. I like the idea that it is a little creaky and that I made it, plus I think it's just gonna look really cool. <laughs> Uh, 
honestly, I have a bunch of ideas uh, for other projects that involve wooden screws now, which I want to tackle next. Clamps, different kinds of lamps, things like that. Oh, also the size of the dowel here was not an issue at all. Like I was a little bit worried that I had made it just a touch too small. But I actually think that it might not be a bad idea to undersize it just a touch. Because then you have no issues when using the thread box. As long as it's not too small. So after making the threads, uh, there were sections that were still quite dry. So I figured I should just go crazy with the wax polish. So I used this wooden nut to thread it over and over again. And that seemed to work nicely and get into all the grooves. Now, it definitely takes a while to thread it all the way down, but of course I'm not going to be using the whole thread for the vise. I mean, there's going to be a relatively small section that's going to get screwed back and forth over and over again. And uh, yeah, in terms of strength, I've been doing some tests and yeah, these screws, they are really strong and I am not worried whatsoever um, that the diameter is, is not thick enough, you know, that the whole screw is too small. I don't think that's a problem at all. Okay guys, so experimenting with this screw vise idea has been a lot of fun and I want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video which is Squarespace and it's because of the support from companies like Squarespace that I can make videos like this and share them with you guys. Now I have a great discount code for you which you need to use if you're in the market for a website because Squarespace is the place to go if you're looking to make a new site, perhaps you have an awesome product that needs to get out there or you want to share your portfolio with your creative work. Whatever it is, Squarespace makes it easy to set up a beautiful website using one of their gorgeous templates. I can tell you from personal experience that their e-commerce system is great and their whole platform is seamless and intuitive. So perfect no matter whether you have any experience making websites or whether this is the first time you're attempting something like this. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash darbenorver for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks guys. It's pretty big. <laughs> I'm not sure if I actually need it to be this long, but you know, it's better to go too long as opposed to the other way around. So yeah, this will be the leg, it will go in here and then it will go in like that. I will drill a hole here, put a handle through here and that should be able to withstand a lot of force, I think. It kind of feels like a sword, <laughs> you know? I think this is gonna work out. Um, I think that the real tricky part is going to create the, the nut, you know, into the leg and making sure I do that straight. Very tricky, uh, so we'll see how that turns out. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if there are any questions, if there was something that I wasn't clear about in the comments below. And yeah, otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon, bye.